back to the HTC Recharged Tournament. Um, we've had some pretty cool matches uh, already, and we're going to lead into Gara versus Show. Two players which we've seen quite a lot of over uh, you know the past past few years of Hearthstone actually, and uh, both are a bit on the upswing uh, recently. You had uh, you had some thoughts about that, uh, Nimsh, didn't you? Oh yeah, um, like Gara did really well at DreamHack Summer. He didn't get to top eight, but he had some good scores and he's going um, doing good at the Vulcan League. But obviously, he is the winner of the original first DreamHack Bucharest and the yeah. second DreamHack Bucharest. He was in the finals. Uh, a guy that um, is really underrated. But he is to be feared. Uh, bringing Priest uh, to this tournament is not a class that we don't see that often. It's actually the, the first player that did not bring Warrior in this tournament so far. His lineup is uh, Hunter, Mage, and Priest. Um, again, I'm kind of going to expect Freeze Mage again, just because that seems to be the going trend with every single Mage I ever see in a tournament. Uh, Hunter, doesn't matter, but Priest, yeah, what, what can we expect from that class these days in the tournaments? So uh, we've seen Colento play a lot of Priest, and he is bringing a Control version, but uh, recently there is a Mech Priest, and um, Gara was playing Priest uh, one year ago, uh, so he definitely knows how to play the class, but I have no idea what he can bring. I, and I, 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 unfortunately, I don't know as well how good Mech Priest is, but it is something that people actually bring, and they even have some success. I think Game King was playing it mm -hmm. uh, in some kind of a show match. Yeah, shows bring in the hunter, warlock, and warrior decks. Uh, again, the the typical three. Um, I believe it didn't work out for Ecop, but it did work out for Asahida. But Asahida uh, brought those classes, but didn't bring exactly the archetypes of them that we had anticipated. He was bringing the control warrior from Show. In fact, um, he is a very well-known control warrior player. I have seen him play Patron a little bit but um, certainly not as much as Control. Uh, do, you have, do you have maybe some insight on that? Have you seen him play uh, either of the decks recently in tournaments? Yeah, I've, well, on ladder, he, uh, last week, he basically got uh, first place um, at EU Legends by the end of the month with mm. Patron Warrior. So he, he's really running a lot of Patron and innovating a bit. Like his, his early version um, that I've seen him playing was uh, running double Azure Drake and double Numbish Inventor. Right now he's uh, he was running the more uh, normal version, no Grimash, uh, double slam, and I think he was running Harrison Jones as well. But he's definitely uh, playing a lot of Warrior. All right. Well, we get we will get into the game here in a second. Um, looks like the the players are. Uh, oh, we're gonna see the priest pretty soon here. Oh man! About that. We, I actually we are don't gonna, like the class. We are gonna open up with uh, Warlock versus Priest. Now, whenever I'm the Priest, and I do play a lot of fun decks, so I do end up playing quite a bit of Priest, I always feel I'm, I'm a bit of an underdog against a, uh, a Warlock, just because I'm playing a slow deck, and they're playing a deck that can draw way too many cards. So it, it, I don't even think it really matters what archetypes of these classes are being played. I think the Priest is just at an automatic disadvantage in this matchup. I think that if uh, Priest faces Zoo, uh, Priest will have an edge, versus Handlock with Giants, it's definitely a very hard matchup for the Priest. Mm -hmm. And uh, versus Maligos, again, I think Maligos has an edge because Priest gives uh, Maligos enough time to get the combos. Yeah. And versus Zoo, you know, um, you can lose because sometimes you just don't draw your answers as a control priest, but uh, more or less you have so many cards to deal with the board, uh, just steal the, the small minions with two uh, to attack that, uh, that you just win versus Zoo, it's just favored. Do you think the, the minion theft is really still the strength of the control priest, though? Because, um, like, that's that's kind of shifted a little bit in the other direction. Like, it's really hard to steal relevant minions from, like, Grim Patron. Um, it's not as easy to steal minions from Hunters these days with Houndmaster, with, you know, a lot of the earlier minions just being more disposable, like Web Spinners. So, it, I mean, it feels like those cards have kind of lost favor. Uh, that's probably why we never see priests in tournaments. Um, but really, is it good enough to bring a priest with minion steal as the main highlight of it? I, I think that um, I, I totally agree with what you say. Uh, I think you, you have to call down the, the the minion stealing. Like at some point, people were playing double shadow madness. I, right now, I think one should be enough, mm -hmm. and maybe even one cabal. But uh, versus decks like Zul, like Hunter, you should always have targets to steal. But uh, mm -hmm. somebody said that Priest is 
Priest is so bad that it only wins when it steals good cards from, from his opponent. That could be the case. We did miss the first few turns of this match, uh, again, because we keep encountering bugs with the spectate mode. This is a little bit out of our control, but in this case we missed absolutely nothing. Uh, it is uh, a pretty typical control priest versus a handlock, so a pretty bad spot uh, in terms of the matchup of the priest, but a pretty good spot when it comes to the opener here. Yeah, it's, uh, it's one of the ways that you can actually win uh, the matchup as a priest. Uh, normally it's so bad that the only way for you is to be super aggressive and try to to get them low and maybe just win by by damage and board. If um, Shell doesn't get a, a Shadow Flame, you might not be able to clear the board. Uh, also, Handlock is not playing Siphon Soul that often. Like some, Sometimes people play only once, uh, most of the time they don't play at all. Uh, mm -hmm. Ooze, so we can see the anti-weapon tech that will not work versus Priest. Yeah, I mean, Sho probably put in the Ooze because he's expecting to see uh, a lot of warriors and uh, hunters, which is uh, fairly good. I mean, that's that's a reasonable expectation in this tournament. Yeah. And um, I think, like, if you're playing Handlock, you don't really need Harrison. It feels like one of those clunky cards is just way too slow. So we do see a lot of the Oozes from this deck more than, uh, more than the Harrisons. This is definitely a, a decent card, um, and Harrison is just not fitting the mana slot for Handlock. But overall, he he got one Twilight Drake. He doesn't have the Giants. Uh, he doesn't have Mountain Giant is really important in this matchup. He just, but then again, there is a Shadow War Death for for Gara. So this looks all right for Gara at the moment, drawing a lot of cards, uh, setting up a force. He's gonna push for a lot of damage. Yeah. He has another circle heal, by the way. Oh man. He also has a silence for Twilight if he chooses to, but he's just killing it with oh. the Light Warrior. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess Gara thinks that if he just draws enough cards, he'll win the game. Um, and Gara playing Priest, uh, he probably has encountered enough handlocks to where he thinks this is the winning strategy. So I kind of trust him. Uh, I don't think either of us really can make predictions as well as he can. So I think. I think this is put your faith in the Gara type of moment here. Like, I, I guess that's just what you do, you know? Now we know. Yeah, I, I think that was definitely a correct play there. And he has that silence for, for a taunt, so instead of just using the silence for to clear the Twilight Drake, um, he, has a, he is in a good position, like double Shadow War Death, as, as we said. And um, it's also like a, a bit of a different version. He's running Pilot to Shredder. There is a Taurison as well. But this deck doesn't look that good versus Handlock at the moment. No. It doesn't. It doesn't look that great versus most decks, actually. It, it does have some of the minion stealing and the, um, the double circle heal. Just has like traditionally good matchups against aggressive but not too aggressive decks. Which I guess a lot of people play on ladder. But it feels like the top of the meta right now isn't playing that. Like the top of the meta is playing combo. Yeah. So what do you do this turn, being Gara? Uh, like just attacking and no healing, maybe. You can pain. I mean, what else are you gonna shadow word pain? Is that the best target? Yeah, it is. It is the best target in the deck. So I think pain, and then you can you can hit the remainder with your four seven, and then you can draw a card from that. Harrison Jones is also um, all right because. That's a big, another big minion. So he's trying to pressure Shao, but Shao got Shadow Flame. So but you actually, you couldn't make the play I suggested because you'd overdraw, I believe. Oh, with Circle? Yeah, yeah. No, with, uh, with Shadow Word Pain. Shadow Word Pain, attack and heal. You'd be again at uh, 10 cards. Yeah. All right. Um... Here you might, like, it seems Ancient Watcher Shadow Flame is an obvious, pl uh, obvious play, where you just uh, almost mm -hmm. deal with the board. You, you leave the 1 1 Cleric, which is not that threatening. Um, is there anything else you might want to do? No, nope. seems pretty standard. I think Show is about to do it here. Um, I mean, Priest really relies on being able to utilize its hero power and uh, secondary heals on minions with a lot of health. And when it can't do that, it's uh, in a pretty horrible spot. For Gar, it seems like an obvious story, so now. I think maybe the reason why 
uh, the Belcher was not Shadow Ward Pain is because Gara has Shadow Madness, and while it is the best Shadow Ward Pain target, it's by far the best Shadow Madness target. So That's perhaps true. he was just a bit greedy there, now that I think about it. Well, on the other hand, uh, because he baited out Shadow Flame, uh, he knows that one is out of the way. Mm -hmm. But uh, if he if he gets into the back foot, he will be in a, in a weird spot. Is there any reason not to play Torison here? If you play Torison, you get a cost reduced of uh, some of the important cards. Uh, you don't get that much value because some of the cards are super cheap anyway. Mm -hmm. But I mean, he, he put this deck together and it seems consistently like mid-range like Control Priest, so... I mean, this is just an expected result from Emperor Tarson. Like, it doesn't look as good compared to like what we often see from the combo decks, but... Yeah. I mean, if this card is in here, I think this is what it's supposed to do. Nine cards, whatever they are, whatever. Yeah, that's a lot of mana gained, and uh, he will have an am amazing turns after that. Okay, so back to show. Um, he needs to obviously remove Torison. Can he do that? Not really. So he might need to to keep the Torison on board. Just play his Doctor Boom. Mm, Doctor Boom. Will that work? He, I mean, he has the, the Death Holy Nova answer, but sometimes it's not really going to work because the Boom Bots decide otherwise. And do you really want a Death, a 7-7 seven, seven that doesn't even have Taunt? Well, if, uh, if there's a Holy Nova, if Antorison survives the Boom Bots, then the board is getting cleared. Mm -hmm. So that might be why you don't want to play um, Torison. Uh, if you play Sylvanas behind the Taunt, Priest will have oh, to wow. somehow. This is a sick turn, by the way. You can actually silence Sylvanas, uh, Power Word Shield your guy, and steal the taunt. And then Circle Heal, if you really want. Yeah. No, he's just doing a clean one with death. That's also pretty good. Um, Molten, Defender Vargas, <laughs> not that great for now. Yeah, Molten is not a good Priest card. The anti-strategy. Yeah. Cycling the Power Word Shield is a good play. I mean, that's a card that already costs zero. You want Emperor Tharson to land on a card that costs more than that. I think I've seen one game where Priest was actually able to steal the Moltens and win with those Moltens. Because the game went to fatigue, Priest versus Handlock. And in mm -hmm. the end, Priest was able to play the Moltens, like really close to, to fatiguing itself out. The funny and thing is... Uh, Show can finally clear this Emperor Tharson, but it literally eats up his entire turn. Yeah, that would be it's much. the Dark Bomb Hellfire. Show is just shaking his head. You know, it's like, how am I losing to Priest? This is the best is matchup he? I could get. Is he losing? I don't know if he's losing. He's not it's winning, but not is Gara winning. really winning? <laughs> uh, I think Gara is in a, in a very good spot with like Torison being yeah. still on board and... Uh... I, think, I think he is. So this turn you do kill it somehow. Um, I, don't, I don't like Holy Nova that much. No. You don't have to Holy Nova, you can just use your other death here. Let me change your mind. Stealing the bombs. Mm-hmm. All right, so Gar chooses to ignore it. Oh, he's, he he might still use the death actually. Yeah, death for one mana. And he's seen one shadow frame already. So yeah, this is this is really tough for show. Like no good way to clear this unless he hellfires and the bomb hits. So he basically needs to attack with a bomb. The bomb needs to hit the 4-5. No, I think you actually don't attack with a bomb. Just Hellfire without it? Yeah. So many possibilities. The bomb hits one of the important targets, and then you Dark Boom the other. Yeah, so, that's the idea, I think. Probably six mana. It might, it might actually not kill the Emperor Tharson. You, need, you actually need some pretty good energy to kill the Emperor Tharson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but that might be the best play still available. But if you attack with a Boom Bot, I think the chances are actually lower, because there's twice as many targets. True, just, true. Just half your chances. But then you, you, you deal one damage for sure. Wow! Four damage to face. 
Yeah, that does guarantee. Oh, he takes four damage back. Those are some lethal boom bots. I was telling you, man. Those oh, man. Are not to be messed with. The boom bots are too powerful, I think. Like, the disparity between one and four is just big. Yeah, okay. Shell is just having fun with this. <laughs> okay, he doesn't have that much fun, but he thinks he yeah. lost. Yeah. Um, well, he hasn't lost. If Gar had an Akanai, it would have been lethal, I believe. But without it, uh, he is all right. Um, with Akanai, that might have been... Yeah, with Holy Nova, Akanai. Yeah, and Lighter Than Aru. This is also a clear sign uh, to Gara that there is no Molten Giant, right? Not because yet. He has an opportunity. Yeah. There's a clear sign that there is a Molten Giant coming, though. <laughs> Well, All right, make a Holy Nova play. Not, and, you know, not really much well. else you can do. But you saw, I mean, you just saw Sho's ability to clear the board last turn. It was basically nothing. Yeah, so. and also you've seen one Shadow Flame as well. So Sho needs another Shadow Flame. Doesn't really do much. Well, okay. Um, yeah, you can't do anything. Like, healing doesn't work. If you heal yourself, you actually pump up the Light Warden to 9. So you obviously die yeah. with the board still. You um, can't draw cards? Well, you can tap. You, ha you, you have to tap. There's no other play. Um, I believe you have to tap into some way that the Piloted Shredder ends up being a... Doomsayer. Uh, Doomsayer, yeah. So you can, you can like tap into a... Shadow Flame. Um, Shadow Flame or Dark Bomb, yeah. Or if he has like a Siphon Soul, we haven't seen that yet, but it's possible, I suppose. But even if you get a Shadow Flame, um, no, you're still dead. <laughs> wow. Well, oh, this that's... is the big game. Oh, that's true, the big game. Oh, you missed that. He, yeah, is, but... he is one from dying now. He, he actually doesn't die. He doesn't die for now, but he's Yeah, we totally spell. missed that. Well, he doesn't die for now, it's like, yeah. Yeah, Shows maybe. clapping. Light bomb. Um, so Gar can't really draw cards at this moment. No, but he he might have lethal with dark bomb if he gets uh, a dire wolf uh, from the shredder or a totem or a charger. That's three. It's not so, really worth it though. Yeah. Is it? You no, I don't. I don't think it's worth. He's he's such such in a good in such a good position that there's no need to risk the light bomb here. Yeah. And those minions, they basically do nothing. You can play another Pilot Shredder. Show is not representing anything with this card. Show yeah. is su surprised he has one more turn. <laughs> <laughs> like, He's probably yeah. not that surprised. I mean, he... Um, he had some chance. Okay. Um... Ragnaros, by the way, is an interesting card choice for Handlock. I like yeah, it. it wasn't good enough there because it was at one health. Even if he played Ragnaros, even if he hit the Shredder, and even if the Shredder popped a Doomsayer, the... Oh no, the remainder wouldn't have it. Show actually had another turn if if a Doomsayer, Doomsayer. came out. Yeah. Because the one the one two slime that would pop out of the Shredder would, would have uh, no option to attack. It, it would basically effectively be played that turn. Yeah, but then like... You're still at one health. Uh, I agree, like, he had a, a chance to not die, but overall in this matchup with no Molten Giants and nothing else, he was uh, he was dead anyway. I just, I just like to see it. Like, I, w I want to know what was in that Shredder, you know? Oh, man, yeah. Yeah, you kind of want to see those things, right? Yeah. But then, Priest won. Great. Yeah. Priest won. There we go. Priest takes a game. Gara has to uh, still win games with Mage. Uh, again, I'm betting on Freeze Mage and Hunter. That doesn't seem like too difficult of a task against Sho's uh, fairly standard Hunter, Warlock, Warrior matchup, or uh, lineup. I wonder which Hunter is he playing. It's like bo both players playing midrange. Garo is playing a lot of Hunter himself. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the players have both selected Hunter for the next match, which we'll uh, get into here in a second. Um, the Hunter mirror, that's, that's kind of a weird one, right? Like the midrange Hunter does like good, or the midrange and the hybrid both do well like against everything except like the face hunter. Yeah. Face hunter is really good versus those decks. Mm -hmm. But we might have a mid-range versus mid-range matchup. And then it's get, it gets really tricky. Like oh, obviously opening hands are important, but then when do you deny the beast? Are you fr are, are respecting the houndmaster who yeah. plays versus high main? Is there a freezing trap into the high main? So a lot of those small things. 
who gets the bow value. Uh, like play your, your eagle horn bow and then get the secrets. Sometimes players also have those ninja cards like Kizan Mystic. Yeah, Kizan Mystic, we actually saw it in one of the Hunter decks. I believe it was um, one of the players earlier. I think it was the invited player, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was As uh, Asahida. Asahida. I yeah, I've so. seen. Um, there was uh, there was Kazan Mystic on board, yeah. Mm -hmm. Stranglethorn mm -hmm. Tiger. Look at that. That's a ninja card. It is an interesting card uh, from Gara. Gara's bringing in the flavor, man. I like it. Well, if you tone it up, it's a seven seven, and uh, it's it's hard to kill. And no, that Hunter's shows Mark. Hunter's Mark, yes, and uh, Abuse Surgeon as well. Yeah. Now the I kind of regard as Hunter as kind of boring and dull to play, but uh, you 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 call it differently. You like the Hunter matchups, I, I take it. But I I do agree that uh, when Hunter plays against another Hunter, I think it is actually uh, a pretty skill game because uh, grinding out those extra like one or two points of damage is uh, usually what's going to separate a win from a loss. Yeah, that's certainly the thing. Also, how do you play around the secrets and um, the, the assumptions that you make? Mm -hmm. There's Arcane Golem for for Gara, so he is playing um, a different a different build. It, it's even hard to say it's a hybrid because right now we don't know enough about this deck. It's just Gara's Hunter. So it's a snake trap. Well, Stranglethorn Tiger was played in uh, one version of Face Hunter. Um, several months ago, I believe. Uh, people used it, I think, right after Leroy was nerfed. Because it was enabling kill command, for sure. Like, you play it and it yeah. does die. Yeah. And it usually got the damage through, so it was kind of like Leroy, just a bit less surprising. Yeah, it's a, it's a decent card. This is a very interesting board, by the way. You, you, Gara has a snake chub on, and um, Sho knows that, because he attacked phase and nothing happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my god. God. With double juggler? Oh man. Double juggle. I mean, those jugglers are never getting attacked. Right? <laughs> yeah, you can't. Okay, freezing trap into Leox. Show is in trouble. Gar kind of. This is a, a check. This is not a checkmate yet, right? But uh, he's mm -hmm. basically saying, hey, you can't attack my jugglers. And my jugglers you, are going to attack you. Do you think. Um... Bouncing the Liak was the better of the two, though. I feel like Liak is stronger on the board than the uh, Haunted Creeper. Um, I, I, I think I agree, but then like I can understand that uh, he is keeping Haunted Creeper as well because he is going to play that Liak, uh, which will add this one attack. But then like you have to take your take. Like, Whoa! You have to have a plan here, by the way. That's bad. What if yeah. that's explosive? Oh, no. Yeah, well, that, that was bad. <laughs> that was a bad hit. Yeah. I wonder if Sho is even playing an explosive trap. That, that was a really bad hit, because, like, the only way you'd otherwise get that trap up is attacking into the jugglers, which you don't want to do at all. Do you think, like, maybe he should have attacked the jugglers first? And then play the tiger? What? No. I think you just pray to the RNG gods and hope you don't get screwed. Okay. Oh, well, I'm in his stealth, it can taunt. Alright, so it looks very good for Gara. Uh, no secret for uh, for show at the moment. 7-7 uh, seven, seven Lion, Dot Juggler. Even though I mean, I mean, it looks good, but the, the Hunter's Mark is kind of the decider, right? Like, the Hunter's Mark makes it so the 1-2 creature can kill the Tiger. But then, if the same thing happens and the, the juggles resulting from the snakes kill the Haunted Creeper, then the high main has to attack it. Yeah. Which is That's game losing. Hilarious. It yeah. is game losing. And also Gara has so much burst in hand with uh he has an iron beak. Pretty difficult turn. But uh I guess going for phase is the best play anyway. Hero power. I, think I, like, I like the iron beak on uh, on the high main. If there is a haunted, if there's like a hand master buffing the high main, uh, then you want to iron beak that instead. A uh, quick shot is is a good insurance draw, just in case things go really wrong. 
Well, you can kill the juggler, so then you don't mind. Oh right. Much. So you just don't don't even uh, don't even bother with it. Yeah, that's true. All right, and uh, there is a snake trap that we knew. That's still a lot of damage. Like uh, show just has to catch up on so much damage. And this is kind of what we were talking about early on, where you know the early few points of damage make such a big difference. Uh, we shot, we saw that early bit of damage by getting the early lead with abusive sergeant, but uh, ultimately the uh, the tiger and combos of Gara uh, ended up pushing for a little bit more, and shows in a situation where he may have to make some pretty unfortunate trades. Actually dead um, because there is enough damage, but like oh yeah, the the, the bow and the arcane golem. He was uh, if he would seven, go. Seven, yep. If you trade with the four free with the high main, he had a chance. But there, you are so behind that you have to take those, those chances. Mm -hmm. Here, Gara has enough. Oh damn, Gara is super starting it up two zero. It's on the roll. I think that's the the most decisive, uh, the most one sided start to a, a match we've had so far uh, here at the HTC Recharge tournament. Oh yeah, definitely. And um, I want to throw the fact that last time we had hyped uh, advanced in the top four of the HTC One tournament, so mm -hmm. a pretty good showing for Temple Storm. And Show was another player that actually got eliminated round one. So here again, HTC Two, he's uh, facing elimination um, versus the the Temple Storm player. And uh, damn, Temple Storm players not doing too well in uh, some other tournaments as a team, but uh, doing pretty well individually. How about that? Yeah, I'm doing really good. But uh, Show is not out yet. He just nope. needs to win three times versus the Mage. Now, Gara so far has brought like some of his own flavor decks. Um, I feel like with Mage, that can get you into some trouble. There's some Mage decks that seem good that don't really uh, have consistent wins. I want to see Flame Waker. That's one of the ones that I was a bit concerned about. Uh, we will get to see what uh, it's going to happen. Uh, show has locked in Hunter, so we're going to see Hunter versus Mage. Hunter, I think, overall is just pretty good against most Mage decks, so there's not really much to worry about from Show. He probably just wants a few wins on the board if he's he's going to drop out of this uh, out of this tournament here. Yeah, okay, but... guys, it's it is single elimination, best of five uh, on day one. We're going to see all the players. We're going to cut them down in half for day two when we're eventually going to see our champion. All right, so we know that this is the midrange hunter. He's running one abusive. Did he just draw a second one? No, he kept it. Okay. And you've mentioned oh, that we're gonna get we're gonna get into the game in a second here. I know, I know, we get to see a few parts, but uh, they they don't, they don't get to see the game yet because uh, right. you know with, with spectator mode being what it is, uh, we often have to uh, skip the first turn or two of the tournament. Um, and uh, we'll we'll let you guys know if if some exciting things happen. So far, not 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 too exciting though. Not, not too crazy. Uh, is is going to be the same hunter deck, of course. And uh, I mean, in this matchup, um, like, what do you what do you go in as the hunter, assuming that you're playing against? Like, let's let's just say your show right now. Like, we, we we see we see what's going on, and it's it, it is the flavor. It, it is, is the flame waker. It is what you wanted. Yeah, but like most of the time, because mage represents so many decks, I think you have to assume that you're going against aggro, unless you really studied the player and you know that the player is mostly playing one specific um, archetype. If, if you don't know that, you just play against aggro every time because you have to mulligan against aggro. Uh, but, you know, Hunter actually has a, a, a lot of flexible hands and uh, mostly you just mulligan for the low, dro low drops anyway. anyway. So here I believe Zuka trades and uh, just, just attack face, but Show's hand is not good. Well, it could be worse. Hmm, double high main Dr. Boom would be worse. Oh, the three straps pretty nice. It kind of takes away tempo, which is really the only thing you want. Yeah, also it's important that med scientists will be dealt with uh, because if there will be a, a mirror entity for now, it wouldn't look that good. Well, I think you'd consider just hitting it too, wouldn't you? No, I guess not. You, yeah, you don't think it's okay to just hit it? I mean, you have a lot of junk creatures. Um, I think the freeze for the next minion is fine because if it's another small minion, you can again kill it with your weapon. And if it's a medium size or a big minion, you freeze that one. I think it's uh, it's fine to get the scientist with the freezing trap because if you hit it, you basically give them a free secret, and uh, you also filter their deck so they have a bigger, like better quality on the card they draw. Mm -hmm. So you want them to draw into that mirror, uh, mirror entity, and uh, you want to avoid that as well. Yeah. 
That's a fairly small factor at the start of the game, though. Yeah, the small decisions you have to make. By the way, it's very important for Gara to keep up the coin as well. Um, Flame Waker can use the coin to some some great start. But this turn, I believe, just... I think you you attack and then you maybe Arcane into Play the other one? Mm, you might draw cards. Because you have... Okay. Oh, a yellow Flame Waker. Interesting. That represents so much damage if it's not dealt with, but we know that for sure it will be super easy. Just Hunter's Market. Well, he can Huffer into it, but yeah, it looks like he's choosing the, the Hunter's Mark option. So the Huffer can push for some damage, and he really needs that damage. Yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll be the, the one being aggressive here. Gara is trying to just accumulate cards. Oh, he picks up an, another, another one. one. Pretty I think sweet. you have to go for that. Uh, at this point, you actually might, yeah. Um, I would not expect a second Hunter's Mark, and if you got Flame Waker, Coin, Frostbolt, maybe you get lucky with the coin even. Maybe even not Frostbolt, like if you, you coin and ping if uh, if you get one hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then, I think that's true. What do you think, like if he loses a second Flame Waker, then that would be awkward with so many spells that he can use? Uh, yeah. But like, if you play the other Flame Waker, you will have the insurance with the Frostbolt, and if you use the Frostbolt, you only have one other spell in your hand, so is it really that big of a waste? Not really, I think it's fine. Alright, so Flame Waker, coin, and then next turn, okay, he decides not to, not to risk it. What is he risking though? Like, what would be the card for Hunter to kill the Flame Waker this time again? I don't think there are that many cards that would kill the, kill the Flame Waker on 5. I don't Maybe think he like kills the Flame Waker, I think he just wants a bigger board presence. He's probably afraid of like kill command quick shot and a weapon attack. Mm -hmm. I should remember it, that's kind, of, that's kind of bad. Yeah. I mean, this, this is one of those decks that actually often only runs two Secrets of two, two Scientists because it's a tempo deck and it expects to win quickly. They sometimes run counter spell, but uh, most of this they have double mirror, and that's it. Okay, so that's, that's actually a great shredder. Yeah, and there's a mirror entity, hopefully for Gara. So the high main. Oh, and he gets the the creeper. Yeah, but still, it's awkward for show. Uh, Gara has second mirror entity, and if he forces it next turn, he knows that this is the midrange hunter. It seems like both players are are in agony. Oh man, Arcane Missiles, that's a lot of damage. That's pretty good. Are you a fan of the missiles here? The Haunted Creeper. You might want to do attack, ping, and then Flame Waker missiles. I, I'm a fan of Mirror Entity. But I don't think it's being played. Yeah, he's deciding not to play it. Well, Shell still has three cards. Uh, that's why maybe Gara is thinking, if I play Mirror Entity here, I'm losing tempo and I'm just getting a, a small minion again. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. It's just not a very high chance of it working out. A portal... A stable Portal Boys. I love the card, by the way. It's so cool. Oh man, a Rhino. Under Rhino. Man, when this happens in like the, uh, the Tavern Brawl Challenge, it's the best. Instead um, of portal into like a relevant card. Yeah, Rhino is, is one of the best cards, and uh, Hi uh, Hyena is also great because you have so many web spinners. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what you can do here um, Gnome is going to provide you with one spare part, which is a spell, so you can maybe use it, but it seems like your Flame Waker is dying here. Yeah, your Flame Waker is not surviving this turn, so it doesn't really matter that you get the spare part. Um, I think the the Rhino kind of pushes for a bit more tempo, and that's the type of game that you're playing right now. Yeah, I think it's fine. Like he still he used double Frostbolt, but he still has the Fireballs. Oh, is he going for the for the trade? Looks like yeah. it. Full trade. Okay, so trading game versus the Hunter. He still has mirror entity, so it's not that terrible. But uh, there is a Mad Scientist pickup. Yeah, most shows gonna play as mad scientist because it's easier to deal with than a shredder. And with in the optimistic case, there actually is no um, 
no third secret in this Tempo Mage deck. Which I think I, I would make this assumption as well. Yeah, like you mostly don't play around Counterspell. It's like you just uh, play around Mirror Entity, and uh, if that's n if that's a Counterspell, you're, it, it's good for you. So here, uh, either Shredder or Alnish. I like Shredder. Those uh, minions are not representing that much damage. And yeah, but Shredder... when, are, when are you going to get more than four doggies? Well, it is some good Anish value, but Shredder is basically giving you more value overall. Mm -hmm. You can get four dogs, and then you will be forced to trade. Right. Well, like, when, nice yeah, when you, when your hand sucks, the best thing the top deck is an Azure Drake, and then draw another one from it. I think he is still happy about it. Yeah, no, that's great. I mean, yeah. he was kind of like this is the type of game that he was playing. He was playing the trade game, the value game, the control game, and Azure Drake is in line with that type of play. That's true. And look at that, he's going to get more dogs. Oh my so god. That actually worked. It actually did work. Yeah, he gets max, he fills the board, so that's that's the play. Unleash the hounds, probably that's kill off the 2 1, and then. Uh, How much damage, what? Is, by the way? This is 6 plus 5, 11, 13. And with the dogs, it can be. It's 6, six. plus 4 plus 4. You can actually play all the cards. How much damage is the overall? 14, so he, he 19. Use the first. He can get him to one. He does not have lethal because of the creature cap. Yeah. If he could play eight creatures, he would have lethal. That's right. He's actually at 19. 19 points of damage available. So close. So close. But that, now he's also fighting against time. Time Rewinder? <laughs> Possibly. Whoa. Terrible jokes are real. Yeah, that was uh, my kind of joke. You stole it, but that was pretty All good. Right. Well, um, Show goes for a compromise play. He uh, is afraid of a few things. So getting a Freezing Trap. Uh, he's definitely afraid of Fireballs. Mm -hmm. Well, Fireball doesn't kill him by itself. He does need some help with it. No guys is... trouble. Yeah, Gar is in trouble now. Is this where we unstable portal like a Malganus? That would be pretty good. Um, what else? Deathwing? Can you even play Deathwing? Yes. But then there is a... Yeah, Deathwing would be good, actually. <laughs> yeah. Pretty good. <laughs> Okay, Violet Teacher is not helping, so is there any way that Sho uh, that Gar can actually survive here? Well we don't know what the trap is, but Gar is assuming it's freeze trap. trap and and oh do we know that it's freeze I trap? Think, yeah, we know this is a freezing trap. Oh, I, I didn't I didn't see. I, th I thought we were guessing. We got the information from production. Oh I see. Oh yeah, you're right, you're right. Freeze trap boys. Yeah, so that makes it so it's uh very difficult to really do anything. He might have to draw with the other Azure Drake into like a Frost. No, he already played two Frost Wolves. Yeah, he used both of them. All right, so Sho's going to take the game. Um, not that yet. He's fighting. One deck locked. This is kind of what I was uh, a little bit afraid of. I feel like while Flame Waker Mage might be like kind of cool and maybe a bit, a bit consistent and like ladder, I feel like against the top of the meta, it's not really that great, and you're just better off playing Freeze Mage. Yeah, it's um, it's a bit awkward. Like it's very good versus um, Face Hunter, but then it is a, a, a tempo deck, and you have to to have this magical opening mm -hmm. versus Patron. Versus Patron, I think it's all right, but you need to win fast. You have to you need to have a good opening, and then missing yeah. weapons, um, you having mirror any um, mirror images. I feel like against against Hamlock, it's pretty bad too, isn't it? It's one of those yeah. like really terrible matchups. It's kind of like Mech Mage. You you basically try to have this amazing opening, deal as much damage as possible, just uh, forget about Molten Giants. Like, Handlock cannot have Molten Giants for each yeah. way. And then you, I think you still need to top deck those, those Fireballs to finish the game. Mm -hmm. So again, I ask you, like, uh, would you prefer to be Gara or Show in this spot? I think that's the same spot. Like, I would again prefer to be Gara because you have two shots. Um, and winning. like the God draw? Yeah, to get the gut draw, yeah. and basically you, you are playing an aggro tempo deck. Mm -hmm. And we've seen Sho really struggling with Handlock versus Priest, like he got terrible hands and uh, Gara won with Priest. So maybe Handlock will uh, 
not work again. And Patreon, I think Patreon is actually an alright matchup for this deck. Yeah, I think so too. I'm also thinking that, like, because you know exactly what it is going into it with Handlock, you can mulligan accordingly. So, like, you might just hard mulligan for Giants. Yeah. By the way, do we know it's Patreon? We don't know it's, uh, if it's Patreon or not. We haven't seen No, we, we, were, we were kind of guessing, but you mentioned how in the last few tournaments and yeah. uh, in Ladder he was playing a lot of patrons. So, I mean, players are generally fairly consistent. Uh, we do know that he is queuing in uh, with Warrior here. And um, that should okay. be a patron. We, we know it's patron warrior now, but you guys, well, you guys will find out in a second here. We just want to make sure that the, the spectator mode that we have for you guys is in line with everything. All right, so, so uh, patron versus mage. Patron versus mage. Yeah, it feels like the patron uh, has a good shot at it. The patron does match up pretty well against the board, but uh, if you're playing tempo mage and you get the god draw, it feels like. Um, it feels like Patron Warrior is one of those classes that can get overwhelmed. Yeah, that's certainly true. Um, and there's a, there's a couple of cards that you need basically when you go into this matchup. As a Patron, you need weapons. Um, as usual, when you play against Aggro uh, as a Warrior deck, you need weapons to kill the minions early. Um, and uh, if you do have those weapons, you might just kill everything the, the Mage plays, and Mage will just run out of cards. Patron, if he has enough time killing those minions with weapons, will draw cards um, during his turns and will just uh, combo out in the in the end. Well, those uh, Mirantes are going to prevent a lot of weapon hits, but um, with Whirlwind and perhaps another creature if it's drawn, Inner Rage. Hmm. This seems like an okay Inner Rage target, actually, the Armor Smith, doesn't it? It yeah, protects it from the Mana Worm, you can start dealing with these minions that you're using weapon charges on. Definitely. At this, at this point, you, you want to kill those minions as fast as possible. So you need to get to that Mana Worm to be able to kill it. A second Mana Worm and a Portal. It's actually an interesting turn. It's really good. That's a really good turn. Yeah, it's, it's a good opening. Uh, he's kind of short on cards, but this Unstable Portal might be very important. Keeper is okay-ish. It's something yeah, I'd be able to play next turn. I like the trade here, though, don't you? Hmm. No, well, he does it. Yeah, he does the trade. Well, I think it's okay. Like, whenever you play aggro deck, you want to kill Armorsmith fast. And uh, it, if you go for phase for free damage, this Armorsmith will provide some armor and also deal with your, your tokens. Mm hmm Show with a pretty passive play there. I actually wouldn't mind the other even more passive play with a double Warwind. Oh man, a Flame Waker top deck. Um, you can play the Keeper here, damage. Yeah, that's a fourth minion that's uh, two damage to face. It is a minion that will stick on board. You are playing Azur Drake next turn. You want, you might want to silence Acolyte of Pain. I think that's a really valid target, but other than oh. that... So the only no, reason to keep... Yeah, you're right, you're right. I mean, you've seen that show's options sucked. <laughs> like, he just used an Axe Charge and two cards to deal with, like, not even all of your mirror, uh, mirror images. Yeah. For sure, it's uh, it's looking awkward because for now he can't use Battle Rage, even to cycle. Uh, but he is getting the Death Spite and he will start start killing those minions next turn. Dr. Boom. Arcan and Arcane Intellect. Wow. Yeah, I think this is exactly what Gara needed to win this game to, uh, versus versus Warrior. That's the opening he hoped for. It is the opening he hoped for. Uh, Show didn't have the worst of openers, even though it seemed like it. He just had to be wasteful to stay in the game. Um, but if Show actually had like absolutely nothing, like sometimes you just get like the, you know, Emperor double Grim Patron hand, which like against Tempo Mage you just 100% lose. So I mean, Show had some comeback, and uh, because of that, you know, Gara hasn't completely dominated. The game is not over yet, like, Green Patron mm -hmm. and Warrior is, is sometimes able to do some crazy turns and crazy comebacks. Uh, he will be able to draw some more cards. He's not dead yet, he's a 25 at the moment. No oh, bad Armor Smith. Like, clearing Armor Smiths is always so weird for aggro decks. You know, you're you're giving armor, you're losing damage because you have, you have to attack into it, but second Armor Smith is out. That's good news for Gara. Okay. He plays the uh, mirror entity here, which would normally punish an emperor. But um, well, actually, the cool is pretty cool. 
Oh man, yeah, second second go, um, play around mirror entity, give a target that doesn't do much. It even helps you more than it helps your opponent. Especially because both minions are at 2 health. Okay. Well... There is a silence though. I think you do silence the... Um, the cool. Acolyte. You the yeah. silence acquired. If you silence the ghoul, you will be able to deal more damage. Uh, you have the silence. You have a stable portal, so you can basically you silence the ghoul. You oh, I see. A stable yeah, you portal. You can't push for a lot more. Uh, worm will deal five damage at least, and then with flame waker you deal two damage from the. So you just don't care about him drawing cards anymore, and you hope he doesn't kill your ghoul. Yeah, I think at this point you have to just. Um, be Go for pretty it. aggressive, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like, Patron will not be able to gain health and... <laughs> Shows, like, are you serious? <laughs> yeah, that was... Well, that was a portal card. Cogmaster, though, is not that good. Mm -hmm. So Gara will just continue to pressure. That's how tempo decks work, and uh, he's, he's doing it really well. Cogmaster will actually get plus two because of Dr. Boom summoning mechs. Now, Cogmaster is going to die this world, I believe. Yeah. It's like the best world ever. Slam on the 2 4 world and clears the board, actually. Oh, man. That's really powerful. Do you. No, you can't play a minion that's too, man too damage because uh, th there will be a secret coming out. This is one epic ruin. Mm. He's playing a minion, he's playing another cool. He's so generous, right? Like, giving the ghouls to his opponents all the time. It's working out pretty well for him, though. I mean, he has he has some chance in here. We were talking about how he's, like, completely getting owned, but... I mean, there's some chance that he uh, he's still in this here. Yeah, I, I certainly agree. Like, this is Green Patron, and... Uh... Gara is running out of cards. Show is still at 15. More importantly, Sho has not drawn a uh, Execute, so if that Dr. Boom lands one hit on face, it's basically constantly going to be the threat of a Fireball top deck. Yeah, also he lost both Armor Smiths, so right now if he doesn't Armor up every turn, he might get in range. So for Gara, he might be... this is not an obvious Boom, you might actually go into, into Azur Drake to draw more. But Boom is really strong. If there is no Execute, as you said. Well, Sho really needed uh, a combo piece there. He's going to Battle Rage to try to get it. Oh my. Oh, There's both of them. Interesting. Uh, but does he have enough time? Oh, with Torison, he might have some time, but... Um, wait, if he plays Torison, is he dead on board? That will be seven. I mean, he might be if the boom bots land in the right order. It's just eight eight points of damage needed from the boom bots, and um... but this is this is the play to win. Like if Show makes this play, that's that's like good for him. Yeah, he's giving himself cha like, a chance. Even knowing both hands, I think it's the best play. I agree, uh, because you can't go with the combos, like you can't do throwing now, you can't uh, patron, so basically there is nothing else you can do. You could maybe, like even if you draw, maybe you, you could try get execute, but no, then you, you'll not have enough mana to inventor, taskmaster and execute. Alright, so can Gara find default here? I think the play is to maybe ping the ghoul. Oh, just go for it. Oh. Okay. Uh, you might actually attack. Hmm. All right. I think Three. I'll use the goal. Oh, that's enough. That's lethal. That's uh, should be lethal, right? Eight, nine. It has to be arc lethal, missiles. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, be surely lethal with arcane missiles. Yeah, flame waker arcane missiles is just too much damage. Five damage. Basically, five damage to face. Yeah. Okay, so uh, it seems like Gara is going to take it with the Flame Waker. 
And again, we see the situation where even though the matchup was not the best, it was uh, it wasn't the worst, and uh, he gets the, the dream opening. He gets yeah, it, was, it was just good enough. Gara takes a uh, show in a pretty dominant uh, fashion, moves on to day two of uh, HTC Recharge Tournament, which will be tomorrow, of course. Uh, pretty good stuff. I think uh, that game really showed high-level play. I think uh, even show losing a lot of those games uh, made some very good stuff. In fact, in the handlock game, he made some survival plays that we didn't even anticipate were possible. Uh, he didn't win, but I mean... He did surprise I mean, us. Yeah, he did surprise us. If you if you can if you can show us some good plays, that's that's winning the hearts of the people, man. Up next, we will have uh, Strife Crow versus Lothar, and uh, we will have completed uh, half our games after that one. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Uh, just to remind you guys, uh, as you guys can probably tell, this is HTC's tournament. They are putting putting the show for us. They are making this happen. And uh, if you guys want to check out what they have to offer, they have some pretty sweet phones. In the description, you guys can go check out their website, check out uh, some of their products, and right now they have a $50 off uh, purchase for a phone promotion, which you guys might be interested if you're looking for a new phone. It is a pretty good one, and I have one myself. I'm pretty happy with it. So Yeah, it's an HTC um, One M9, right? That's right. That's, That's the big one. The yeah. boys. You can play Hearthstone on it, but you can play anything else, and it has a pretty good camera. I'm, I'm using one as, as well. They may actually have the best cameras, like 5K resolution photos, I think. They're huge. Yeah, they're pretty huge sick, stuff. the photos. Anyway, guys, hope you guys are having fun. Uh, we will need uh, a few moments, a few minutes here to uh, set up the production and uh, have Strife Crow and Lothar get ready for the upcoming match. So hope you guys stick with us, and we'll see you guys shortly. <laughs> 